Shalom, my friends. This is Max Joseph, and I'm here because I just saw Frozen 2. Frozen 2 was directed by Jennifer Lee and Chris Buck. It stars Adina Menzel, a.k.a. Adele Dazim, Kristen Bell, Jonathan Groff, Josh Gad, Sterling K. Brown, and Evan Rachel Wood. And the story goes like this. Frozen 2 asks the question of why and how Elsa was born with magical powers. And that answer is literally calling to her and, at the same time, threatens her kingdom. So, Elsa, Anna, Kristoff, Olaf, and Sven are going far into the forest to know the truth about an ancient mystery of their kingdom. In the first Frozen film, Elsa feared her powers were too much for the world to handle. In Frozen 2, she hopes that they are enough. And before I go into my review, please make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel, and ding that little bell to get notified whenever I post videos. My friends, this is why animation is my favorite genre, because it can encompass every genre. It can have action, comedy, drama, suspense, fantasy, sci-fi, western, everything, you name it. And when it's done right, you get something magical. And that is the case with Frozen 2. A beautiful story, remarkable and memorable music, stunning animation, and wonderful voiceover performances, and one of the reasons I really love Frozen is because it isn't necessarily about two people falling in love, but instead it's about sisterhood and acceptance of others, and in our current society it is more important than ever to lean on your loved ones and to accept people as they are. And another reason I love these animated films are because kids love them and they learn from them. Films like Frozen 2, they, they teach kids to be kind to everyone, and if you're lucky enough to have a family, Love them. Ugh. God, I love this movie. So all that being said, here are my bullet points for Frozen 2. Bullet point number one. Let's start with the best part of the film. Kristen Anderson Lopez and Robert Lopez, you, you've done it again. You've managed to write another perfect soundtrack. And I'd argue that this soundtrack is even better than the first. How is this possible? Let It Go is arguably the most memorable song written for film in recent memory. And now, you give us another one that ups the ante with Into the Unknown. But that wasn't even the best song for me. Yes, Into the Unknown is the big number that'll get pushed this season, but I was really in love with Show Yourself. I'm gonna make a weird comparison here, so stay with me. This is giving me serious A Star Is Born vibes. Reason being, Shallow was obviously the big song that won it all and was beautiful, of course. But I'd argue that the most impactful and powerful song was that final one, I'll Never Love Again. It wasn't the catchy song that everyone was singing after, but it had the biggest impact on the film and its audience. So I think this is the same with Show Yourself. Not the flashy song, but it's the one that really pushed the film to being as powerful and beautiful as it was. It doesn't take away from how good Into the Unknown was, which, which is, you know, epic, but as far as emotional impact, Show Yourself is just clearly the superior song. And we also got what we all never knew we needed, an 80s rock love power ballad from Kristoff. It is one of the most ridiculous things I've seen this year, and I'm so thankful that I have it. And these are only three of the eight full-length songs we are given from this power couple. So congratulations, my friends. I think you're about to win another Oscar. Bullet point number two. This is why Disney and Pixar are the greatest animation studios in history. This film is stunning. It is a visual masterpiece that exceeds the first one by miles. Even if you didn't like the story or the songs, you, you have to respect this glorious animation. There is no other studio on the planet that, no matter what the film is, puts this much into their animation. Every single shot is magical. From the close-ups on Olaf's glistening, snowy body to every detailed leaf floating off a tree in the distance, it is perfected. Bullet point number three. Were there some faults? Sure. I think for about... 10 minutes towards the middle end-ish. I felt the film starting to slow down, but 
they fixed that very quickly. It wasn't anything too big or too much to take away. Was it predictable? Kinda? But like, who cares? I didn't walk in expecting an M. Night Shyamalan twist out of nowhere. I went in expecting a beautiful story, wonderful music, magical animation, and terrific voiceover work. And this film checked all the boxes. Bullet point number four. Speaking of voiceover, this is why we need an Oscar for voiceover performance. Let me explain. Without Robin Williams, there is no genie. Without James Earl Jones, there is no Mufasa. Without Ellen DeGeneres, there is no Dory. And the same can be said for these characters. Without Adina Menzel, there's no Elsa. Without Kristen Bell, there's no Anna. And most importantly, without Josh Gad, there's absolutely no Olaf. The way Gad is able to convey so much joy and life into this magical snowman, and then at the more emotional moments have us crying, or me, crying uncontrollably, is masterful. You cannot teach his comedic timing as a voiceover artist. You just can't. No amount of dubbing or anything will do what he is able to do so naturally. So I think that it is just so beyond time to finally have an Oscar for voiceover performance. I'm speaking it into existence right here, right now. I'm giving Frozen 2 four and a half stars. And you know what else? Don't tell anyone. I loved it more than the original. Shh. My friends, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel, as well as follow me on Twitter and Instagram at mjoseph492. And if you really love me, please consider being a patron on Patreon, where you can get patron-only content, guest interviews, giveaways, and lots more. You can even give me a film to review or a song to cover. And that video will be dedicated to you. Shalom, my friends.